The document I'm holding here in my hand is a informed consent form, and before we can do anything, uh, we really have to make sure that every participant is fully aware of the excitement and the challenge of going up on a suborbital flight vehicle, the Lynx. So, Pera, I'm going to ask you to sign this document before we go any further. <laughs> no choice. Thank you. Thank you, Pera. Thank you very much, Pera. Well, now that, now that you have the document signed, I'm in a position to give you a ticket. <laughs> This is your ticket on the links, as you can see. It's number one. Somebody has to be number one, and I couldn't think of anyone better to do that than Pear River. Thank you so much, Jules. It's an absolute uh, pleasure, and I, I just can't wait till we start, start flying. And, and thank you everybody for coming here today. It, it is a, a great joy to share this, uh, this ride that we have set up to do now here together with you and I hope a lot of you will be following it. I'm a pioneer. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an adventurer. I'm also a financier. And above all, I'm a space enthusiast. I run Wim of Space, which has got two missions. Number one is to shoot me into space. And number two, is to, in the process, inspire young kids to live out their dreams, whatever their dreams are. And I hope to become a good ambassador in that regard. On the first part of the mission, going into space, I am so grateful and excited that XCOR is going to be delivering on that part of the mission. XCOR has, as Jules was saying, a fantastic track record of just doing things, not talking about them. Delivering things. And one thing that is absolutely key for a person like me, an adventurer, is the safety profile. We want to make sure that we get a great ride and a great experience, but also that we come back to share the experience with you. On the second part of the mission within Women's Women Space, we hope to inspire young kids, as I said, to live out their dreams. And we have teamed up with uh, charities such as UNICEF to help execute on that plan. I think there's a lot of um, misperceived and not great role models out there that seem to be attracting the children of today. And my hope is that by being engaged and involved, that we, that people like myself, can inspire young kids and show that space and science is actually a cool thing. And they can do it. If I can do it, they can do it. And I think that's a really key message to, to show. My space trip should be seen in a context of a lot of great adventures like you were ending, Jules. I've, just to mention a few, uh, I have been skiing in 5,500 meters, the highest ski station in the world. I've traveled to more than 50 countries on Earth. I'm sort of a bit of a mix between a 007 and an Indiana Jones because I've been on to all these great funny places on Earth. I live with the Indians in the Amazon. I've traveled Africa thin and thick. I've been diving with sharks in Fiji. I've done all those great things on Earth. And recently we did a historic adventure where we did the first ever tandem skydive over Mount Everest. Never done before from 9,000 meters and down. Uh, so that in itself was a fantastic accomplishment and also a great guess, springboard by, by achieving or, 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 or um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, winning over the highest point on earth and thereby getting ready for what is going to be the ultimate adventure of my lifetime and that is going into space. So I can think of nothing more exciting having done all these things on earth getting ready for the ultimate trip of a lifetime, the trip to space.
seafood. You know, you, you love the adventure. What is your most thrilling adventure to date? Was it the Everest attempt? It's a very difficult question to answer because each adventure has, has had its own great merits and, and great courses that we've been doing it for. But I must say, uh, ev the Everest skydive was was high up there. I must say, if not the greatest, because it was so. Uh, it was world history. It was the first time that we. No, it's the second. It was the first time that, that we wrote uh, world history truly. It's never been done before. It was such a great uh, adventure, thrill. It was a great teamwork that was, that was put together and a lot of effort. And um, it was in such a beautiful place. Not just not just in terms of the landscape, because the mountains are absolutely fantastic. Um, but also with the people, the, the people from Nepal. They're so beautiful inside and really helpful and just great people to be with. So I must say, it, 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 on all levels, it was really uh, a top adventure. So what do you dash do? You skydive at 9,000 feet? or At uh, 30,000 feet or 9,000 meters. Yeah. So the way we did it was we took off from um, four kilometers of altitude. There was a little small uh, runway that we effectively created. Uh, I, we, we took the, the rocks away from, from a little piece of grass. Uh, yeah. It's like a little football field, a really, soccer field. So we cleared it from rocks and then painted uh, the white stripe so it became runway. Took off from there in a Pilatus Porter airplane, which normally is not certified to fly this high, so there was a little bit of fingers crossed in the experience. And we flew for 40 minutes. Um, and on the way up there, you look down, and the first the half of the, of the flight up there, you, you're just amazed by how beautiful it is sitting on top of the Himalayas. It's beautiful from downstairs, but from up where you see everything around you, it's just mountains as far as you can, the eye can see. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. And then suddenly you start becoming very um, uh, impressed by the mountaineers who are climbing all these mountains. You just think, my God, what an effort. I mean, they're really doing something amazing. But quite quickly after that, you start thinking, oh my God, <laughs> we're actually going to be jumping out soon. We're yeah. <laughs> actually going to be jumping out soon. So it, it sort of gets changed into that, and, and then you start getting your routines in place and get ready for the actual jump. You get the two-minute signal from the pilot, and the door opens, and then we start to get into position. Check, last check on the oxygen mask. We wear oxygen mask, which is basically a Eurofighter modified oxygen mask, and then we attach it to the oxygen, oxygen bottle. And uh, then, uh, uh, then we go forward to the door, and then one, two, three, bang, off you go. And so you basically go home for Everest. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. We have to keep a little safety distance to the mountain itself yeah. because we don't want to have a, a wind that suddenly takes us and leaves us stuck there. So you've got to have your safety margin. Uh, but you then fall uh, and you reach a terminal velocity of about 200 kilometers an hour. Yeah. The temperature is minus 60 degrees outside, so it's pretty cold. Yeah. But we wear a special suit. Uh, heated, it's not a heated suit, but a specially warm suit and wind resistance. And then we have a helmet uh, and goggles, and we have a special protective uh, clothing uh, that we wear on the face. Uh, and that does the trick, actually. Okay. So that takes us down to about 5,500 meters, where we open the parachute, and then we glide for about eight minutes, and then we land the same place as we took off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so, so you're excited about this rocket launch. So yeah. when it's going to be around about 2011, is it, or 2010? So I, I hate to put a time on these things. There's two things you always know in rocketry. It takes longer and it costs more than you initially thought. So it'll happen when it happens and it's all obviously dependent on, on the testing. Uh, however, I must say they have made very, very good progress and, and are making very good progress in the, in the work shed in Mojave. So I know that things are moving ahead and, and you've got a physical rocket there to look at, which is fantastic. So I'm really, really excited to, uh, to see the, the, the progress. And I wish they were ready tomorrow and I'll jump yeah. on the plane tomorrow. Of course. I've done a lot of my training already. Sorry, can I get a photo of you two with the Of course. Of and course. this time you're not bailing out, so you can enjoy it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Good luck with your flight.